So I'd like to just pose a question to the panel, have a little bit of discussion, and then we'll turn it over. Um, you, you know, Sid gave us a great perspective on innovation of how, you know, really a bunch of smart guys sort of got together, observed some, some changes in technology, took advantages of that, and, and created a, tr a tremendous company and, and, and great products for us to use. Will talked about the education challenges we have in this country and, and how are we going to address those education shortfalls to ensure that we continue to be innovative. Dan talked about the fact that we have no national strategy for innovation. Other countries do. What, how are we, we going to grasp that? What are we going to do about that? Danny talked about the different components of innovation, different levels of innovation, and where we need to focus and, and increase people's perspectives that it's not necessarily the end product, that's how we get there that matters. And then Tom gave us some perspective on some of the things that are going on today, sort of the, 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 the partnerships that are being developed between industry and government um, and universities. And last night, um, I know some of us sat in and, and listened to Craig Barrett talk about the crisis in, in our education system and innovation in general. I want to share with you a little, a little bit of a different perspective. Uh, there was a report from the RAND Corporation that just came up from the National Defense Research Institute. And the short story is, what crisis? You know, should we be worried that America is truly losing its edge in science and technology? And they have some very interesting st statistics that they share. The report states that America is still the world's science and technology powerhouse. It accounts for 40% of total world spending on research and development, and produces 63% of the most frequently cited publications. It's home to 30 of the world's leading top 40 universities, it employs 70% of the world's living Nobel laureates, and America produces 38% of patented new technologies in the OECD, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, and employs 37% of OECD researchers. So the question I have for the panel is, do we really have a crisis? Do we really need to change what we're doing? Are we on the right path? And if not, what, what do you have to say about this kind of, this kind of information from Rand? Well, I know you have some thoughts. Well, they're backward-looking indicators, and they lag the reality by 20 years. Other than that, I'm fine with the data. <laughs> you know, getting a patent, let's say you're 27 and you're really good, and you've already got four or five of them, means you're really well-educated 20 years ago. You're, the hysteresis in the system, hopefully the United States still has, you know, uh, majority of the top universities uh, in the world in the next 50 years. Uh, but to me, that isn't that really, but doesn't address the issue for the for how we're educating uh, our youth and the amount of education that we're that we're providing them and the and the basis of that education. So I, I, I don't get wrapped I don't get wrapped up on on the number of patents. Um, I, I get more excited about patent reform, but not for this meeting. And, and so for me, we had this conversation at breakfast. I said, I, that it's scary to me to watch very erudite people argue with data that actually isn't germane to the topic. <laughs> um, because I'm always frightened that then I don't get it. Uh, but in this case, uh, you know, it's, uh, I'm not changing my position on this one. <laughs> Sid? Listening to Will is uh, always both fun and illuminating. He um, brings to mind a, uh, an aphorism by a wonderful one-time poet laureate, Robert Frost, who said that the human mind is an astonishing instrument. It turns on automatically when we get out of bed in the morning, and it does not turn off until we get to the office. <laughs> <laughs> Take all this stuff, and in the absence of a leadership whose mind, whose minds don't ever turn off, we're not going to make a hell of a lot of progress. I love that earlier reference to the anthropologist in this world. Uh, the lesson for me, and I don't work for the buzzer, is that the technologist doesn't invent the world. It is the user 
who invents the world. And if you want to see the appropriate intersection of technology and success, look at it through the prism of the way people live. I have often said, get me some poets as managers. I say it not to be a wise guy, not to be cute, but because I think of our poets as our original systems thinkers. Your reference to Berkeley reminds me of my characterization of the digital world. That's what's going on there. I think an emphasis on leadership as we think of innovation in the future is crucial. Dan, you talked about a national well, strategy. Yeah, I, I kind of, oh, I'm sorry, Dan. <laughs> well, I, 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 uh, uh, we're all sort of agreeing on this topic, I think. So I, I would say that we have a big problem, as a matter of fact, and I agree with Will's analysis of the kind of last century, the last century uh, study. Um, the, the biggest problem is, is very simple. I think if you get a group of 14-year-olds uh, at a birthday party, and they come from a good um, educational system, they've had good families, good to everything, no, no inner city disadvantages, and you, you ask them what they want to do, uh, they, they'll be maybe one, if you're lucky, out of this group will say they want to do, they're excited about science or technology issues. Uh, there's, not a, there's not a passion, there, there's not, they don't see opportunity in science and technology. This is more important than, in fact, our poor K through 12 system, in my view, which is, by the way, very poor and, would, and it needs correcting and all that sort of thing. But the biggest problem we have is the young people do not see opportunity in science and technology. It, it just it doesn't hit them. You know, after Sputnik, they saw opportunity in space. There, are, there are a lot of times you can see surges in science and technology when there's an opportunity that presents itself. Uh, I think that's our biggest problem as a country. We, we don't project this opportunity for them, therefore they don't go there. They want to be money changers or real estate or so, something else, which, which they see opportunity in. It's quite uh, reasonable, as a matter of fact. Uh, so uh, I think we have a big problem there, because uh, uh, young people in other countries see lots of opportunity in science and technology, lots of it, and they're flocking to it, and they're very much more in the developing uh, mode, one that we were in earlier. So I think we need to be concerned about this. I, I really do.